Ozempic is the porn of weight loss. And I'm gonna scientifically prove that it is destroying masculinity. Look, I'm on my own health journey. I was addicted to porn for almost 30 years. And that shortcut to masturbating, to fake titties, caused my erectile dysfunction, lack of confidence with women, depression, loneliness, and low testosterone. And even though I was a PhD in neuroscience, at one of the top institutes of medical research in the world, supervised by Harvard-trained professors and Nobel Prize winners, I still took the easy way out. Instead of being brave, getting out of my comfort zone and approaching the girls I desired, rather than going after those hot girls I had hunger for, I chickened out. So. When I see a grown-up man who is intelligent, hardworking, and loving, when I see him taking the easy way out, jabbing himself with a synthetic peptide with unknown long-term side effects, I get it. Obesity is a bitch. Once you're obese, it seems impossible to lose weight, no matter what you try. Keto, carnivore, vegan, or some other fad diet, bunch of cardio, starving yourself with fasting, nothing works, right? You always gain the weight back, don't you? I was in the same position 10 years ago. 35 pounds overweight, big belly, no friends, and definitely no girlfriend or sex. A typical virgin nerd. But before I tell you what I did to double my testosterone, transform my body and keep my six pack for more than eight years. Let's discover Ozempic together. Ozempic is a diabetes drug manufactured by Novo Nordisk, a pharmaceutical company based in Denmark. This uh, miracle injection is being promoted by TikTok influencers, doctors like Dr. Fatima from Harvard Medical School who by the way, is getting paid by Novo Nordisk. But we'll get to all that juicy stuff soon. Hollywood celebrities, even Oprah is on the payroll. And Elon Musk, shame on you, bro. Whatever the f happened to first principles thinking when it comes to your own body, you're taking a shortcut too? I used to respect you, Elon. And now, with all the crazy money Novo Nordisk is making, they're worth more than the entire economic output of Denmark. They're by far the richest company in that country. Do you even understand this? This company made so much money from gullible men trying to lose weight that it is more valuable than the entire GDP of Denmark, a first world country. So what the hell is Ozempic? And how did a diabetes drug made in Europe become a weight loss cure in the USA? So what is happening? Diabetic men take a one milligram jab of Ozempic every week. It uh, increases insulin secretion in the pancreas and that regulates blood glucose. Great. Okay, simple stuff. So what exactly happens when you eat something? The food travels from your mouth to your esophagus, then to your stomach, then to your small intestine, large intestine, and out through the anus. And of course, there's passage of hormones and fluids with the liver, gallbladder, and the pancreas. That's some very basic physiology of digestion. Fair enough. But there must be some hormonal signal to stop eating. Otherwise, how would your brain know that you're full? There must be some message from the gut to the brain. Turns out, there is. Cells in the intestine secrete a peptide hormone known as GLP-1. Now remember this acronym because I'll be repeating it throughout this conversation 
And you need to understand GLP-1 if you want to know how Ozempic works. GLP-1 does two main things. The first is that it increases the release of insulin from the pancreas. That's perfect for someone with diabetes who is unable to produce enough insulin. The insulin causes glucose uptake from the blood into the cells to produce energy. Awesome. And the second thing GLP-1 does is that it delays gastric emptying. Basically, it keeps food longer in your belly so you feel satiated. And therefore, you stop eating. The way GLP-1 does this is by binding to its receptor. Anything that binds to and activates a receptor is called an agonist. Remember this word also. Agonists attach to and activate receptors. So the receptor can function and cause physical changes in your body. Think of an agonist as a key and the receptor as a lock. When the key goes into the lock, the lock opens. There are GLP-1 receptors in the pancreas, in the intestines, in the brain, in the liver, in the gallbladder, even in the heart, basically everywhere. And therefore, this GLP-1 is a big deal. It's affecting many things in the body, not just digestion. And uh, what does Ozempic have to do with GLP-1? That's the cool thing. Pharmaceutical companies can create an artificial synthetic molecule that mimics the natural molecule in the body. You see, the ozempic molecule is so similar to GLP-1 that the GLP-1 receptor thinks that ozempic is the real deal. It may not be the perfect key to open the lock, but it's uh, good enough. You know when thieves are trying to like pick a lock, they don't have the actual key, but they have something, some, uh, you know, pin looking thing that is good enough to open the lock. That thief is Big Pharma and that pick is Ozempic. So when Ozempic binds to and attaches to the GLP-1 receptor, it activates it. That's why Ozempic is known as a GLP-1 receptor agonist. With me so far? If you got lost, don't worry. I'll be repeating this throughout our debate and you'll be able to become a damn master at this topic. One more interesting thing. When Ozempic binds to the GLP-1 receptor in the gut, it distends the belly physically. And that swelling, that mechanical distension is why you feel full faster. The gut also has the vagus nerve, which contains, you guessed it, GLP-1 receptors. And Ozempic activates the vagus nerve so it can travel up to the brain and inhibit the regions that are in charge of making you feel hungry. Multiple regions are involved here. The brain stem, the hypothalamus, as well as the cortex. It's beautiful neural circuitry. And if you want me to go deeper into this stuff, just comment below and I'll make another video about it. But what you need to know today is that Ozempic signals appetite suppression in the gut and in the brain. Ozempic cannot pass the blood-brain barrier, but we have seen receptor activity in those areas of the brain that are not protected by the blood-brain barrier. It's super cool. Did you know that? There's a part of the brain known as the circumventricular organs, which are not protected by the blood-brain barrier. Insane stuff, man. And Ozempic can sneak into that part of the brain. I'm sure you've heard of the dopamine molecule, right? The one that's like in charge of the anticipation of reward. When you're opening up that package of chocolate ice cream, as some kind of like ice cream cone, you're anticipating that creamy, cold, chocolatey feeling. As you get closer and closer to that first bite, dopamine activity becomes higher and higher in the brain. And guess what? 
that reward pathway is big time involved with Ozempic. In fact, a few weeks ago, when uh, I was traveling to Cyprus, there was a dude sitting next to me on the plane named Michael. He ordered a steak, took one bite, calls our air hostess and tells her he's done. I couldn't believe that this guy was gonna let this ribeye go in the trash. I knew how delicious this was because I had eaten two already. I had to ask him, yo dude, what are you doing? Is everything okay? And as you may have guessed already, he was on Ozempic, 2.4 milligrams per week. He's a diabetes patient, 72 years old. His dose used to be one milligram per week, and then the doctor upped it to 2.4 milligrams per week because that's the recommended dosage for weight loss. By the way, it's called Wegovi. It's basically Ozempic, but with a higher dose. My friend Michael had lost his hunger for steak, and he's supposed to be a man. <sighs> this made me sad. <laughs> but let's go back to obesity, the satiety signal. What is happening to it in obese men? In a well-functioning digestive system, the satiety signal is sent to the brain when we eat the following three types of food. One, omega-3 fatty acids. Now, from what I've read, this seems to be the most important nutrient for our body. You get this from grass-fed beef, pasture-raised eggs, wild-caught salmon. Two, amino acids. For instance, leucine. You get this from eating protein, especially from bioavailable sources, such as grass-fed beef liver, and of course, steak. And three, sugar. You get this from eating carbs, especially the good carbs that come from fruits, and vegetables, and honey. But uh, would a guy even become obese if he was eating healthy whole foods from the right sources? I don't think so. Listen, dude, I was eating Taco Bell every single day in college and chicken nuggets and french fries every single day in high school. I'm not exaggerating. When we eat shitty foods, the mucosa lining of the gut gets damaged. I'm sure you've heard of leaky gut, right? Well, if you're obese, because of this inflammation in your gut, the satiety signals don't get up to the brain. And if you're drinking Coca-Cola and eating junk food, you're not even feeding your body with omega-3s, nor the right amino acids. That's why obese men keep eating even after they're full. You know how you can drink a whole bunch of Pepsi and eat some cookies and still be damn hungry? Because that stuff doesn't have the actual nutrients you need to feel satiated and send that satiety signal to the brain. And stress doesn't hurt. Turns out that an increase in cortisol makes you crave sugary, fatty stuff because processed sugar takes away the pain you feel from stress. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So now you're in a dilemma. You're obese. Satiety signals aren't even getting up to the brain and you're stressed, and you've tried everything to lose weight and failed over and over. You go to your primary care physician and he writes you a script of Ozempic. You pay uh, $1,300 a month. You're not gonna spend that money on better food or a gym membership or health education or relaxation or even meditation. No, 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 no. You'd rather pay $1,300 a month for a jab, which you have to do for the rest of your life. Because if you stop, you might gain all that weight back. But worse than that, when you take Ozempic, you don't just lose fat, you lose a lot of muscle. That's right. 40% of the weight that's lost on Ozempic is lean body mass. And most of that is the muscle you have spent years if not decades, building up. So, if you ever get off Ozempic, you will regain all the weight, 
plus more, but that regained weight ain't muscle. No, 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 no. You only gain the fat back. Let me tell you some more cool stuff. This uh, ozempic face people are talking about. Even my mom told me about it because uh, her friends are on ozempic. She told me, unka chehra murjagi hai. Daanche ke jaise lagte hai. <laughs> Let me translate that. You know when a flower is dying and the way it looks right before you throw it away? That's how she described the Ozempic face. They look like damn skeletons, she said. Dache, that skeleton. They've aged 20 years. And uh, this happens due to rapid weight loss. That Ozempic face is because you're losing subcutaneous fat, which is good fat, and lean muscle mass from your face. Horrible stuff. When you get off Ozempic, and gain all the weight back, you don't know where and how that fat will accumulate all over your body. No one can predict that. And when you get that ozempic face, you may have it for life, even after you get off the drug. Metabolism works in diabolical ways, my friend. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Even those chicken nuggets and french fries I was eating for four straight years in high school. You see, as an immigrant coming from a low-income household, I had qualified for free lunch. I ate for free for those four years, but I paid a huge price. Four years of high school, and then four years of university, and then 10 years of graduate school, where I was doing my master's and PhD in neuroscience. That's when I paid the most expensive price. I screwed up my metabolic health. And let me tell you how evil these companies are. The main clinical trial for Ozempic is known as the STEP trial. You can go look it up. Now get this. Remember when I told you that 40% of the weight lost is lean body mass? It's not in the fucking paper. For real, dude. I had to dig into the supplementary material PDF that's where it was. And unless you've done a PhD or an MD and you're very good at research, you won't know this. You see, for most papers, you can read the main PDF and it's all there. But some papers like this STEP trial, which was published in 2021 in a very prestigious journal, the New England Journal of Medicine, it came with supplementary material and, uh, certain doctors actually figured this out, to my surprise. Like uh, Dr. Peter Atia. Almost without exception, every patient we've put on this drug has lost muscle mass, and they have lost it at a rate that alarms me. Mad respect, bro, for digging deeper. I don't really expect that from an MD. So anyway, this figure from the supplementary material shows that out of all the weight lost with Ozempic, 40% was lean body mass. And in this 68-week trial, the participants lost an average of 15% total body weight. And here's another evil. The end point of this study was not body fat percentage or how much fat was lost. Oh no, they hid that part in the supplementary data. They focused on one thing only, total body weight. How f stupid. But they're smart because these assholes know that most men are morons and so addicted to the thought of losing weight that they won't even care if that weight is muscle mass. Jesus f Christ, bro. Do you even know how important muscle is for us as men? F Where do I start? Okay, first of all, skeletal muscle is the most metabolically active tissue in the whole body. The more muscle you have, the more glucose you can store for energy. The more muscle you have, 
the more fat you burn at rest. Muscle mass regulates your BMR, basal metabolic rate, or how many calories you burn when you're not doing anything. It's literally the most precious asset of masculinity. Come on, man. You heard of uh, sarcopenia, the loss of skeletal muscle in old age, right? As men, we will lose muscle as we get older, unless we eat enough protein and do resistance training. And there is no way around this. You know the number one reason why men break their hip after they fall? Why they fracture their bones? Why they die early? Lack of muscle mass. Please understand this, buddy. Ozempic causes muscle loss. A shit ton of it. If you come off of it, you won't get it back. Well, you might say, okay, doc, what if I continue resistance training and eat a lot of protein while I'm on Ozempic? Will I still lose muscle? <laughs> First of all, you saw the step one clinical trial. I showed you this earlier. That's the best case scenario. Remember, these participants were monitored and guided by doctors. And uh, this study's lead author, Dr. Robert Kushner, MD, has been on Novo Nordisk's payroll for a while now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let me show you how this works. If you go to the US government website, Open Payments, you can look up how much money different pharmaceutical companies pay to doctors as private consulting fees. Like, uh, for real though. This guy got half a million dollars from Novo Nordisk. You get me or no? The lead doctor of this study, the Ozempic trial, was paid a half a million dollars in consulting fees by the company that made Ozempic. And you want to trust these guys. The reason I say that this amount of muscle loss is the best case scenario is that there's obviously bias in this study. It was goddamn funded by the pharma companies selling the damn drug. That ain't all, bro. Take a look at the fees section. I've highlighted with yellow the word fees just so you can see how much money was given to all the scientists and doctors conducting the study. And this ain't the only study. The other study called Sustain 8 also showed that 40% of the weight loss is from lean body mass. The proof is all out there on the damn internet. And if you're shocked at how doctors get paid by big pharma, let's have some more fun here. Dr. Fatima from Harvard Medical School, that black chick that was invited by Oprah, she's the lead of the USDA Nutrition Guidelines Committee for 2024 the lead obesity authority for Harvard. Let's see how much she got paid by Novo Nordisk. Oh, only 70K? You got gypped there, girl. <laughs> ah, but this open payments website only has data up to 2022. And we know that the cha-ching started in the last two years. I mean, Take a look at the nonsense this lady is spitting out on 60 Minutes. But the number one cause of obesity is genetics. Yeah, sure. Obesity is mostly genetic. Uh-huh. Some uh, random mutation happened in the last 50 years. Humans evolved faster than Darwin ever imagined. Against all odds, she is literally ignoring the fact that there was barely any obesity 100 years ago, or even 50 years ago. And even today, in many populations in the world, there is no obesity. I guess the mutant obesity virus didn't get there. Shut the f So, uh, with all this recent hype, we are pretty sure that there is some 
extra bling bling to Dr. Fatima. Especially now that uh, she's endorsed by Oprah. Man, this is gonna blow your f mind. Oprah is also on Ozempic and she welcomed Dr. Fatima on her obesity special. Now get this, Oprah has been on the board of Weight Watchers. She had equity in this company, but she sold all her shares for charity. Or there was a conflict of interest now that she's on Ozempic. Huh, human beings. But even funnier is that Weight Watchers, the number one prescribed health program by doctors, these mother swore never to touch pharma. They swore that diet and exercise and lifestyle habits are the key to better health. Even they recently started an Ozempic program. I don't know, man. Don't kill the messenger. And I haven't even gotten to the main problem yet. Can you imagine? Sure, there are some standard side effects, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, upset stomach. Okay, not bad. For weight loss, we'll sacrifice our day-to-day -day happiness. After all, you gotta fit in into that suit for the wedding, don't you? But here's the kicker. Ozempic is killing your hunger. In the short term, you will feel aversion or disgust to food. This has been reported all over. Let me get this straight. One of, if not the most enjoyable things for our existence on this planet, food. Ozempic will kill that craving. Is that actually good? I know when I wake up in the morning, I crave eggs and ground beef with some dark chocolate and coconut water. Every single one of my 3,000 calories a day, every single bite of that delicious food that I eat daily, man, that's a huge part of my amazing quality of life. When my wife and I eat dinner together and uh, I f go to town on that saucy chicken and pasta and perfectly crisp sweet potatoes she's cooked. That's like a sacred religious experience. And you're gonna let a drug kill that? You wanna go through life without feeling the love for food? Even good food? Like that juicy ribeye steak that Michael rejected in the airplane? No thanks, man. But what if that drug kills your desire for life itself, especially in the long run. You already know that many people have reported suicidal ideation. You see it all over social media nowadays. Ozempic also disturbs sleep. Many people have suffered from insomnia. In fact, one of the papers showed that sleep disturbance is the number one reported side effect in the comments on YouTube, Reddit, and TikTok. Imagine. If the hunger for food goes hand in hand with the hunger for other things, hunger for women, sexual appetite for your wife, your libido is at stake here. Hunger for doing great things for your family, for yourself, for humanity, the hunger to achieve your dreams, for greatness, the hunger for life itself, for knowledge, for truth, for freedom, that hunger my friend, is being stolen by Big Pharma. They're trying to numb you. We already have studies showing that GLP-1 receptor agonists can affect libido and sexual drive. And remember, we have no idea what this thing will do long-term. There are zero long-term studies. In fact, the Ozempic user, you, are part of the study. It's going on right now, in real time. The experiment is being done on you. And we know from history, you remember Raimonabant, 
That was also a weight loss drug. It was approved in Europe. Just look it up. They pulled it off the shelves because too many people committed suicide. Maybe it's going on right now too. Maybe people are reporting it on social media. But uh, who controls what you see in the media? Imagine if TikTok is working side by side with Big Pharma. What if Hollywood is working together with Novo Nordisk? You're on Ozempic or one of those things. Or, there are a million ways to lose weight. Because I said, she goes, if you ever want to drop five pounds, this is good. Doctors, scientists, all paid with consulting fees to tip the scale towards Ozempic. In my opinion, masculinity is about the hunger, the drive to be our best selves. Health, money, relationships, and spiritual fulfillment. But how are you going to do that if you get pancreatitis from Ozempic or the range of other side effects like thyroid cancer or gallbladder disease? It just doesn't add up, man. Men are risking their masculinity to lose a few pounds of fat and muscle, sacrificing the foods they love the most, risking sleep, libido, stress, their entire quality of life for some miracle weight loss jab. And as I said earlier, I don't want anything to do with Big Pharma. I'm totally against TRT. I never needed it. I doubled my testosterone and then continued to increase it as I got older. And it's easy, bro. They're trying to confuse you with all the information overload on the internet, trying to bombard you with hundreds of fad diets which are not sustainable. Because if your mind is confused, you'll take the shortcut and lose in the long run. I have kept my lean body, muscle mass, and my six pack for more than eight years. And it's simple. You just gotta do it the right way. Don't go for a shortcut. You're gonna regret it. And uh, be careful who you trust. And now I've given you all the facts and proven scientifically that Ozempic is killing masculinity. The choice is yours.